Donnie Houston. Yeah, what were you saying, Donnie? Uh, no, who were you talking about before in Hillwood? Uh, Hillwood, yeah. And then, you know, I laid down Hillwood, and so now I had to... I had to put it on cassettes, and I, I called all kinds of places, man. And uh, and everybody said that the that the least amount of cassettes they can press up is a thousand. And you know, at like a like at a dollar, you know, at like a dollar twenty a cassette. I you know, I was twelve hundred. I didn't have twelve hundred dollars. Just mm. I just didn't have that kind of money, and that was the least. But then I saw this one little ad. Uh, on the telephone, uh, Yellow Pages, and it said, uh, we we do small orders. So I called the man up. He was a Christian man. He he, he, pressed, he had this little machine that pressed up little Christian cassettes. And he said he could put, like, my name on the uh, on the sticker that you put on the cassette. He could, he could put my name. He could put my, my beeper number. I said, yeah, I just put SPL and put my beeper number. And then he had the case, and he also wrapped the case up in plastic. So I didn't have an album cover, but on the actual tape on the cassette, it said SPM. It had my my beeper number, 713-746-3276. I'll never forget that number. Because I would always see it on that cassette. Yeah. And yeah. I remember he would sell me 50 cassettes, and every cassette cost a dollar sixty. So it was like $75, $80 for 50 cassettes, and I sold the cassettes for $5. So I made 500 So I spent 180 and made 500 And I would sell, uh, you know, 100 are you, cassettes. Are you, at, you at the gas stations? Like, how you, how you get I'm, Man, I'm at the car washes. I'm at the gas stations. I'm in the parking lots. Of, I'm, mostly at night, I'm at the parking lot of Boomerang. Yeah. And, and, uh, Boomerang wasn't a real popping club, but you know a lot of people like hanging out in the parking lot. But during the day, I'm I'm over there at at a couple of stores where I know everybody stops to get forty ounces, and um, you know I'm having to beg my own homeboys. You know, motherfucker, give me five dollars to take this goddamn cassette. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, yeah. And they're like, man, I don't want to hear that old shit, man. <laughs> 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 And then he's like, all I listen to is screw, man. I said, I said, man, it got screwed, you know, because side B was screwed. Yeah. But okay, uh, so okay, with with that, with, who who did it? Come again? The screw, screw, the screw, uh, do the, the screw I, uh, No, I just slowed it down. It had no chopping. It had no bringbacks. It had no. It was just slower. It was just slowed down. I I slowed it down myself. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. screw is just too busy, man. I, you know, screw is very busy all the time. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah. just slowed it down. But um, yeah, man, my own homeboys. You know what I'm saying? And I love them, but uh, I, I, you know, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna find that spear. You know, they say Jesus was not popular in his own town. You know what I'm saying? And, and I understand that. You know, where you come from, probably you just don't give a damn. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, you know, and I, I just made a living, man. I made a living. Then, uh, one day, um, I was selling in the parking lot of Boomerang. And they had these two new security guards, a fat one and a skinny one. And these motherfuckers think they're goddamn police or something, you know. They mm. come around, hey, man, y'all can't be hanging around this goddamn parking lot no more, all this shit. And I'll be like, man. And, you know, I, I got my, my Jabos. I got the big old packet, so I got like three cassettes in each pocket, and I'm trying to sell. And and I ain't trying to hit with these old, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Eight dollar, eight dollar an hour making motherfuckers talking about. It. I'm, I'm selling my cassettes out there, so they catch me. A dude on a motorcycle is giving me five dollars for a cassette. Oh man, you can't be doing that. Hell no, you be. Hey man, you need to get the hell out of here. Get in that club, man. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll go in the club. I, I, you know, I knew the owner anyway, and uh, and they would, they would let me in free. But I took some cassettes with me. So what I did is I went in the bathroom. 
and and I put up a poster in the bathroom, and I started. So, and, and the way that I sold cassettes is I kept a Walkman with me, and I and I make motherfuckers put it on their head so they can hear it, so they can know it's yeah. dope. Yeah. You know, and you got to give them a little taste of that dope so they can see how pure it is. And uh, I'd put the I'd put the headphones on dudes while they was pissing. You know, I'd come up behind them and put the headphones. <laughs> He's like, hey man, what you doing? But I said, man, just listen, man, just listen. <laughs> you know. And I promise yeah. you, man. You know that. You know, Dope House Records. Our, our motto, or the motto that I that I coined, is Dope Sells Itself. So you just gotta yeah. have a taste it. It'll sell itself. But anyway. These two little wannabe lawmans walk into the restroom and see me selling cassettes. So these motherfuckers arrest me. They 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 call the laws on me. They arrest me. They put me in handcuffs. Uh, well, the reason they arrest me is because when they search me, because one dude didn't have no money in the parking lot. So he told me, I'll give you a suite for a cassette. I said, cool. So I put the suite in my sock and forgot mm-hmm. all about it. And the security guards found the suite in my sock. So oh, man. Uh, the owner wasn't there that night. I, there was nothing I could do. So they handcuffed me to a pole in front of the in front of the club, and I waited for some laws to pick me up, and the laws took me to. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I, I didn't. I don't know what happened, but I ended up in the city jail, not not the county. And I remember being in that old nasty ass city, and there was there was a. Uh, there was a dude in the city in the city jail, and he was talking to a group of guys, you know, the, uh, some black dudes. And and the, the dude was like a light skinned light skinned black dude. And he was talking about, yeah, man, uh, you know, rap a lot trying to sign me up right now, man. But I ain't, I don't know, I, ain't, I don't know if I want to hear that right now, man. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to fuck with Def Jam, you know. He's just talking all this shit. Yeah. And uh, I said, say, hey, bro, you rap or what? He said, yeah, I rap, man. Yeah, I rap. So anyway, so he keeps talking with his homeboys. Yeah, man. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my thing. I said, hey, bro, I rap too. He said, all right, man. Good for you, man. Good for you. And he kept talking. I said, well, let me hear something, man. And uh, he said, no, man. I, you know, I, 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 you know, he's just kind of dissing me a little bit. I said, I'll tell you what. You, If you don't want to do nothing, I'll do something. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I'll do something right now. So one of the dudes he's talking to is a cool motherfucker. You know, he's like, hey, oh, hold on, man. Let's see what this messy got real quick, you know. And because the, 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 the little bragging dude, he ain't trying to hear it, but the, one of the other dudes said, man, let's see what this messy got. So I kick a verse. And as I'm kicking the verse, motherfuckers are just not understanding, not understanding and then I always end my verse with a strong punchline, a strong punchline. And when I end the verse, the whole fucking city jail just explodes. Mm. Motherfuckers, oh, man, hold up there. Everybody's just blowing up. So the two laws come. The two laws come running, the the, the, the laws in the city jail. What the yeah. fuck's going on, man? What's going on? And the black dude says, man, this Mexican right here, man, this, this must be cold in a motherfucker, man, for real, man. This must be cold. <laughs> and and the two laws are like, well, you know, because one's Mexican. So he's like, really? Let, let me hear something. So I do another verse, you know, from Hillwood. And same result, you know. I'm, you know, motherfuckers be like, damn, you cold with it, you know. Yeah. And then and then one of them looks at the yellow dude, <laughs> the light-skinned dude, and say, come on, man, what you got for this Mexican, man? Come on, it's your turn. And uh, And the dude says, Oh no, man! I shoot. Uh, my, uh, I, I, my shit ain't protected yet. I got you know. I can't just put my shit. In the room and the room. Shut, shut up! You can't rap. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, and the and the it was the funniest thing. Was he was a little skinny dude. You know what I'm saying? And, and one, and one of the other black dudes said, "Shut up, nigga! You can't rap." <laughs> it was funny as hell. Oh man! Yeah. So anyway. Line, so yeah. the reason I tell that story, Don, is because after that I sit down, you know, and I'm waiting, you know. I, I had already called my brother to come get me. And this little Mexican dude kept, comes up to me and says, hey, bro, um, have you tried going to um, lowrider shows? 
I said, nah, bro, I just stay in my hood. You know what I'm saying? I haven't really went anywhere. He says, man, you should go to, to Lowrider shows. We're, we're doing one, and it's, it's free. It's going to be in the parking lot of uh, uh, Goofy's Pool pool something. But that was like a pool, a place where you play pool, but uh, it had a real big parking lot. And during the day, this uh, car club was throwing a little car show in the in the parking lot. He said, we're going to be there Sunday. You know, you should go, man. Bring your shit, man. I'm telling you, people will like it. Sure enough, <laughs> I went to the most fucking uh, Goofy's parking lot, seen all these low riders and shit, and the, there was a DJ there, and they, they had a little stage where they had the trophies, yeah. And the DJ was on that stage, and I got up and I said, "Hey, man, let me uh, let me let me wreck the mic real quick." I said, "Here, put this cassette in, you know." And he put the cassette in, and I got on the mic, and I started calling everybody. I said, hey, man, y'all come, come on, man. Y'all got some entertainment, you know, in the house. Y'all, y'all come on with it. And I was able to round up about, uh, I don't know, about maybe 17 people, maybe maybe 25 people. Yeah. And uh, I, I did Revenge, you know, which was which was my big hit, Revenge. Yeah, yeah. And, man, would, wouldn't you know that got them about 10 people out of that, 25 people bought a cassette, and then I started going to all the different cars and stuff. And I'm, you know, like, I got to, you know, it takes me a whole day to set, to sell 10 cassettes, you know what I'm saying, you know, in the hood. But these motherfuckers just ate it up, and I realized, you know, I need to be at these damn car shows. Yeah. So I basically, you know, and then I realized flea markets, you know, that that's that's a big that's a big one, so. After that, it was over. I started making, you know, some some good money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you ended up um, talk about uh, because you was, I mean, you were independent for so long. But then talk about because you did a deal with the with, with Universal. Yeah. Um. After Hillwood came Hustle Town. That's what I'm Okay. Yeah. After Hillwood, um, I bought a keyboard. Uh, uh, after Hillwood, I, it was time for a new album. I was selling Hillwood for two years already. It was time for a new album. So I bought a keyboard, and my homeboy Sinetto had showed me how to make beats. And, bro, I ain't even going to lie to you, Don. That same day that he taught me how to make beats, that same day, about eight hours later, I had him. A nice little beat. Hmm. But after a couple of weeks, it was over with. I was making. That's when I made Merry Go Round, Red oh, Rock, uh, Wizard of OZ, uh, Hustle Town. Um, uh, that's when I made all those songs. Uh, when I when I came out with Hustle Town, bro, that was it. Yeah. I, I would go to. I, 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 I'll never forget. I want. I, we would go to the San Antonio flea market. Me and my boy Rashid. And we would sell cassettes, you know, we would sell Hillwood and Hustletown. And we would we would hit San Antonio for a month, you know, hit, hit the flea market. Then we'd hit the, the Austin flea market for a month. And then, and then we'd, you know, go to El Paso and, and hit that flea market. And then maybe the next week, you know, go to Dallas. And we, we would hit different flea markets. Well, about eight months later, I hadn't been to San Antonio like in eight months. And, uh... Some dudes call me and say, hey, man, SPM, we want you to come to this car show. You know, I say, oh, shit, how, how, y'all, how y'all know about me? I say, oh, man, shit, a lot, a lot of people know about you, man. They got your cassette. And I said, oh, yeah, we used to sell cassettes over there at Poteet. Mm-hmm. So we went to the car show, and it was a lot of people. It was like about 700 people. And, bro, they all came to come see me, you know, on stage when when it was my time to, to rap. So I had all these people. I was like, damn. And uh, I started off with Riddle on the Roof. Bum, 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 bum. And, and the, first word, the first line is, um, silently, I received my degree. I got my bastards and dope things, psychiatry. The whole fucking crowd was singing that song with me. They knew every oh, word. Man. All 700 people. Man. And, bro, I looked at my shit. I could barely... Shit, I'm choking up right now. I, I, I could barely make it through that song without crying. It was... It, that's when I knew. And that was on Hustletown, but, um... 
when I, when I saw yeah. Hustle Town, are you not still moving from yourself? Are you, are you going through Southwest Wholesale at any point? Like when yeah, to, yeah, um, yeah. We, we we're we're in Southwest now, and uh, and Southwest uh, because I go to Southwest and 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 they tell me, um, you know, go ahead and leave us ten ten cassettes. This is during, you know, this is uh, during uh, Hillwood. Because I'm yes. trying to go to these record stores and they're saying we go to Southwest. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I go to Southwest. I say, hey, man, um, I'm going to these record stores. They say I got to come here. And they said, all right, well, give us, give us, uh, go ahead and just drop off 10 cassettes. I said, what's it, 10 cassettes? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, 10 cassettes? They said, well, there's nobody asking for your shit. I mean, uh, we, we didn't get no requests for you. Yeah. So yeah. we don't want to. We don't want to waste. You know, we we can't. You know, we only have limited room. You know, you can give us ten cassettes, and I said, well, how do you, how do you get people to ask for 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 my cassette? He said, well, people have to go to stores, and they gotta ask for your cassette. So I'll never forget. I picked up Dopey Willie out of Cloverland, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, he was looking bad. So we went to the Salvation Army. I bought him a canary yellow suit. <laughs> Me and that mother- I get you know, and, and I, I was just I was just nicking off of a rock, you know, just so that he could stay alive. And we drove around to about thirty five stores in one day, and I had that motherfucker going in them stores raising hell. What you mean you ain't got no SPM? God damn it, give me some SPM. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker, he was good. I said, you give them motherfuckers the blues. You hear me? You give them the blues. If they, you know, and you tell them that you and all your brothers and sisters and everybody won SPM. And man, so then I go back to Southwest a couple of weeks later, and it worked. You know, because uh, Robert Gilliman was surprised. He said, "Well, yeah, we 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 have seven. You know, we have seven. Uh, we uh, we have uh, seven stores that ask for one cassette. So so all that worked, and we sold seven cassettes. But it was a start. Uh, but when Hustle Town came out, it was over, bro. Robert Gilliman was calling me like, "What the fuck's going on? All the stores are asking for the you know cassette and." Uh, and they sold out, you know, because I had only had like my, by this time my brother was was partnered with me, so we were, we were able to buy um, like a thousand cassettes, and we were selling the shit out of flea markets and uh, and and, uh, and car shows. But now Southwest started, and, and um, okay, so then after Hustle Town, I came out with a compilation called Power Moves. Right. And after Power Moves came Third Wish, and and that's when High So High and Wiggy Wiggy. And uh, those songs wait, wait, wait. were going. I don't. I don't want to see it too too past uh, the the screw version of uh, power power moves, right? Screw up the world. Well, that was that was by screw. Right, right, right. yeah. I you, couldn't you get screw. Uh-huh. DJ Screw album, right? Uh, one more time. I think you're the only person to have an official album that was screwed by Screw himself, if I'm not mistaken. Unfortunately, if you ever listen to the screw version of Power Moves, all it is is slow down. Yeah. All I could do was get screw. This is when screw was already, um, you know, this is getting close to, to 99 when screw is just fried out. You know, he just, he wasn't functioning well. This was actually 98. And, you know, a lot of people think this, it was syrup, you know, syrup guys. It wasn't, it wasn't no funky ass syrup. It was formaldehyde. Yeah. Um, he was smoking it like cigarettes, bro. And uh, it, it took me about, Jesus, 11 days straight just to get him to come in. And when he came in, I said, man, let's just do a little conversation. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just talk on the phone. So the studio hooked up the phones, and we just had that little conversation. And... I, with that conversation, I chopped up little little parts of him saying things, and I just put it in between the songs. But if you listen to those songs, none of them are chopped. None of yeah. them are, you know, they don't have those little kickback things that he does. But, you know, when he brings it back and brings it back a couple times, right. no scratching, no nothing. It's just slowed down. I, and I'm the one that slowed him down. It's really all I could get. 
Man. But, um, yeah. But, and, but, but how were you slow down back then? What was your process to slow down back then? My process for what, honey? Slow it down back then. Oh, uh, the the guy did it for me, um, Shatoro, Shatoro Henderson, okay. at, at, uh, at, at uh, Track Design Studios in, in, uh, in Missouri City. Okay. And I would say, no, no, slow it down more. I don't know how he did it. He did it on his computer. And he slowed it down. I said, okay, right there. Yeah, right there. It's there. And, and now, now let's now let's record it out, you know. And then we we would put it on a DAT cassette, you know. And the yeah. DAT is what they used to press up uh, cassettes and stuff. And then CDs started coming out. You know what I'm saying? And CDs started coming out. So we had to get CDs. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. So we move on, and you uh, we go to Third Wish, and you were saying high so high. I mean, this is when you, I mean, you all over the radio now, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, finally, see, because what happened was 97.9 just wasn't showing love, bro. They just weren't showing love. But this new radio station came out called uh, House Party 100.7. I remember that. Homie, yeah, it was Homie Marco and... And these motherfuckers was all about SPM. They come out the gate playing merry go round and all this. So when I did high so high, uh, no, just put the train in my house, please. Yeah, yeah, just be right. I'll grab it right there. All right, thank you, bro. So anyway, um, I told uh, I, I told homie, I said, bro, I got a, I got a single. I just lit late. It. It's hot, bro. He said, bring it over by the radio here. I took it straight to the radio station. I mean. I recorded it and mastered it and took it to the radio station the same day. And and ho- I gave it to Homie Marco, and then I left. And then I was jamming. I was in, in my car. I was on my way to Cadillac Bar off of Shepherd in uh, I-10. Because I-, I used to like to eat over there at Cadillac. And I was, I'll was never forget, I was in the parking lot, and I heard him on the Man, we got a new single by SPM, man. Y'all need to check this out. It's called High So High. And he played it. And I was like, oh, yeah. I said, yeah, I, mean, I wasn't that. I mean, I was excited, but I knew that they showed love. I mean, they've been, they've been playing shit out of me. And then he said, my, 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 part of, my favorite part on that was when you said, uh, stop it to me, chance for the wings and the rice. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then to the store, I need a 40 and some dice. Yeah. 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 But uh, anyway, he said, I know y'all want to hear this again. Here we go, two times, and then played high so high a second time. And check this out, Donnie. On on FM radio, bro, he said, I know y'all want to hear this three times. He played that song three fucking times in a row. Uh, 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 the house party did. And then 97.9 was like, hey, man, y'all need, you need to get us a single, man. I said, all right, man. Now y'all want to act, act, act like y'all got some goddamn sense. But, uh, <laughs> But they well once they started they never stopped man that's, they played that shit forever man stayed on the radio yeah I love ninety seven you know I love you know I, love, I especially love J Mac and um, yeah. and uh, yeah but they used to have a, a a show called Straight from the Streets they're the first ones yeah to play me but yeah um, then Universal started calling with yeah. that high so high. And I was like, nah, man, I ain't trying to do no artist deal. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sign up my whole label. You know, I'm trying to be like motherfucking uh, No Limit. You know what I'm saying? I won't be like yeah. No Limit. I, yeah, I only take the whole label. I mean, yeah, how many, many, just, how many uh, go units were you, uh, you moving back then? Um, Third Wish sold 80,000 copies in Houston alone. Damn. 80,000 copies the first month. Uh, wow. You got to understand, 97.9? K one hundred and four K R B E, goddamn, uh, and the house party. And you know what's so funny? Even today, when you look at the sound scans, you can go back to the to those dates, and it'll say Houston, Texas, eighty thousand. Then the next biggest city, Dallas, thirty two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> the next biggest city of 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 when I came out that first month. Was seventy five, seventy eight thousand copies less. <laughs> <laughs> That's what radio could do for you, bro. Back, you know, back then. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, you know, I had all the white kids sharing it, you know, so that's that's what you got to get. Yeah. So then you do, you do the Time is Money album. Yeah, and then and then I got lazy. You know, I stopped making my own beats. I just started thinking other beats were cool and I come out with the Time is Money. So Universal didn't want to act right with, uh, they didn't want to act right with um, High So High. Then I came out with the Purity. That time is when I came out with the Purity next, and the Purity had, you know my name, I'm SPM. Yeah. Uh, uh, SPM, South Park, Mercy, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, that's my, that was my baby, Asia, that sung that chorus. And uh, I, uh, so anyway, after that song came out, Universal said, whatever you want, you just want, you know, you want to sign up your own label, we'll, we'll distribute everybody on your label. And I said, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I want, I got to. You know, I was just trying to take the whole label with me. I didn't realize, like, that was that was a bad mistake. I should have just signed an artist deal and let them blow me the hell up, you know, and become a, you know, and just become a, and make that massive fucking money, you know. But instead, I chose a distribution deal, which they don't really put a lot of effort behind it because, you know, they, they're not they're not really profiting that much. Yeah. They just distribute, you know, and... Um, but it was cool. We did a three album deal. They distributed um uh, uh the purity, uh, time is money and never changed. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean how how was that uh how was it, you know, the whole label experience overall, the major label thing? It you know, we just used them for distribution. So yeah. we we didn't we didn't get to experience their full power. We just they just put us out everywhere we needed to go. We we tried, you know, we tried to use their power. We hired the radio people, we hired their promoters, but they didn't do much better than us. We couldn't get in a radio play, man. It's just it's just hard, man. Mexican Americans I don't know, they're not really opening the door. I don't I don't know what it is, but even to this day, you know, Mexican Americans just um, I'm having. I'm, I'm going to open up my own little radio station. Well, it's going to be a big, big internet radio station. Um, and uh, oh yeah, you know, you all right now. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 building we're building a a big a big uh, internet radio station. So the the real deal, not not no, not no, you know, where, where you have a host and and you just put your little station up. Now we're, we're building a whole our own website, building the whole algorithm. Um, it's gonna, it, it's probably gonna end up being at the end of the day about eighty, just to, just to get. We have one minute left. Nice, nice. But um, well, yeah, no, I know you're getting ready. But man, what's so, so what's the word, man? Are you are you coming home, man? I know you said you know it's coming soon, man. Will you get any data? Yeah, no, no, soon. Yeah, we're looking maybe thirty months. Um, thirty months should should be at the house by then. Um, there's a little something called early parole that we qualify for that, that I can get home a little bit earlier than planned. Um, yeah. uh, at the very worst, it'll be in 24, but we're, we're looking maybe late 22 uh, around there. So I got to start. Shit, I got I to get on a goddamn diet, man. I got to get ready for that world, bro. <laughs> Remember that group called Ready for the World? Yeah, <laughs> Well, I don't want to rush my goodbyes, Donnie. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit you just one more time, and uh, you know, wish you, wish you, uh, you know, a good day and stuff. Thank you for we're, using. We're out right here, so Thank you, Link. Goodbye. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.